Hi, my name is Don Bolt. Welcome to the 10-minute video summary of the message that was given at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on April 20th, 2014. And uh, we're talking about, of course, because today uh, is Resurrection Sunday, so today we're going to be talking about uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we thank you for tonight and for the opportunity to just do this 10-minute video summary of the message that was delivered this morning. And, Father, we pray that you would bless uh, those that, that tune into this and listen, uh, Father, through uh, the means of this electronic media. And, uh, Lord, we pray that you bless them the same way that you blessed us in church this morning. And, Lord, we pray uh, that you do all these things uh, through the power and working of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Christ is risen. And, uh, you know, around the world, you know, th this is said in, out on the uh, sign in front of the church, and we have it in several different languages, that Christ is risen, because this is something that uh, is celebrated uh, by Christians the world over. And it's a declaration uh, that is uh, not only spoken, but in most cultures also there's there's like a standard return phrase. I know in, in Ukrainian, uh, you know, Christos Voskres, Voistno uh, Voskres, you know, is uh, the, the greeting. And it's just, you know, Christ is risen. You know, Christ is risen indeed, or he's risen of truth. And uh, just in, in just solidarity with my uh, friends in Ukraine, uh, this is a, a painting actually that I purchased when I was in Lviv, Ukraine. And just so you know, we're praying for you and uh, praying for, for peace and for unity and for protection for you. And uh, so on with our message. All right, uh, you know, for, for all the movies that I've seen uh, about uh, the life and the, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it still just seems to me just how marvelous to have been there, uh, to be uh, there to witness uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, you think about, you know, some that went to the empty tomb. Not everybody went there, but a few did. Uh, some uh, met him uh, in the dim light of, of the dawn uh, as they were running uh, full of fear and joy uh, to go and tell this news uh, that they, they, they bumped into uh, Jesus himself uh, and, and they saw the risen Christ. Uh, you know, there were those that, uh, that, that met him on the road to Emmaus. And, uh, you know, this morning we just shared bread in the, in the sanctuary because it was uh, through the breaking of bread that they recognized uh, who was talking to them, that it was Jesus. And they said, didn't our hearts burn within us when he was talking to us? And then there was uh, those that, uh, you know, as Thomas, who questioned and said, you know, I, I'm not going to believe this unless I see him and put my hands in the nail prints and, uh, and, and the, the wound in his side because he, he knew what he'd seen happen to Jesus and he wanted to see it confirmed before he, he believed. But Jesus, you know, answered him and said, look, you know, you've seen because you believed. More blessed is the person who has not seen and has yet believed. But uh, but they, they saw him, okay? He appeared to them for 40 days. Acts uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Uh, this is now Luke, the doctor, who has uh, written the Gospel of Luke, now writing uh, the Gospel uh, follow-up here, the book of Acts. And it says, The first account I composed, Theophilus, above about all that Jesus began to do and to teach, uh, until the day he was taken up uh, to heaven after he, by the Holy Spirit, had given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen uh, to those uh, he, he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. All right, so you, know, you have Jesus revealing himself to them for 40 days. All right, and then he was taken up uh, from their sight into heaven, Luke 24, verses 50 through 51. He led them out as far as Bethany and lifted up his hands and blessed them. And, uh, you know, that you know, God is still blessing us by his Holy Spirit uh, in the same way that Jesus blessed them uh, when, when he was getting ready to depart from them. He said, it's good for you that I go away, because if I don't go away, I won't be able to send the Holy Spirit to you. He's been with you. He's going to be in you. All right, and so uh, he, it says, while he was blessing them, he parted from them, was carried up into heaven. And then Acts uh, 1, 9 through 11, written again by the same gospel writer, Luke, it says, And a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were ga gazing intently into the sky while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood by them. And they also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way you have watched him go into heaven. They were witnesses of his resurrection, all right? Uh, you see this reflected in, in uh, when they went to replace Judas just a little bit further in that first chapter of Acts, uh, in, in verses 21 and 22. It says, Therefore it is necessary that of the men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning with the baptism of John until the day that he was taken up from us, one of these 
must become a witness with us of his resurrection. All right, so they were looking for, for people to be witnesses of his resurrection. You have to understand, because how can you believe this? Because they, these people wrote as eyewitnesses, and they appealed to their audience as people who knew what had happened. You know, they said, you know, he was seen of 500 people at one time. All right, and so, you know, there's this, this uh, you know, veracity to, to what's being said here. And, uh, and so... Uh, it says that, uh, that, that they were witnesses uh, of his resurrection. That's what they needed. And on the day of Pentecost, at the birth of the new church, okay, the first sermon, Peter gets up. And uh, in, in this uh, message that he brings, you know, he says, These men are not drunk as you suppose. They've been filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, in Acts uh, 2, 32 through 33, he says, This Jesus God raised up again. Okay, so he's talking about the resurrection, to which we are all witnesses. Okay, and so, again, these people were witnesses of the resurrection. All right, faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ is important, okay? And, and I want to encourage you to keep uh, your place as a witness of his resurrection. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about how you, wait, you didn't see him alive after his passion. Okay, you didn't see him when he came down from the cross and rose from the tomb. All right, but here, just let me just kind of give you a little something about how important the resurrection is. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I'm going to read a few of the verses here. Uh, verse uh, 12 says this, Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? See, this is an argument between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees believed in resurrection, the Sadducees didn't, and, and this conflict is playing itself out in the early church. All right, so uh, verse 14, if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith also is vain. Verse 17, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You're still in your sins. Verses 19 and 20, if we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are of all men most to be pitied. But now Christ has been risen from the dead and is the first fruits of them who are asleep. Now Paul, who wrote this, of course, uh, saw Christ alive on the road to Damascus. And so he's writing as an eyewitness as well. Over into uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 2 through 9, uh, it now talks about us now as, as the people who did not see him yet, but nonetheless being witnesses of the resurrection. Uh, Peter says, May grace and peace be yours in the fullest measure. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected, listen to this, you are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. You have to understand, those of you that would say, well, I am saved by faith in Christ, I am saved by grace through faith, to understand you were saved, you are saved, and you're going to be saved. There is more unfolding of this salvation that, that God has for us to be re revealed in the last time. And uh, if we take a look here, it says, In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ, which is a future event. And though... Listen to this. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, you but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And that thing about you have not seen him, but you believe. Again, Jesus said, blessed are they who did not see and yet believed. All right, so how do we give witness to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ? One, by having this living hope. Don't let it die. When you hit the hard times, hang on to that faith. Press into the Lord. Pray. Seek the Lord. Okay? Live the proof of your faith. Take some chances with your faith. Be willing to step out into some circumstances and trust God. All right? That's one of the ways that we, we, we give proof to that we believe in the resurrection. Rejoice in Him, especially when all that you have to rejoice in is Him. When things go wrong, when things are difficult, when people see that in the midst of that, you may not have a choice about happiness, but you've got a choice about joy because God has given to you joy exercise your right to be joyful and to rejoice in him in those situations and finally live to obtain the salvation of your soul 
the things that we pray and say and do, you know, the things that, the, the words and pictures, the things we keep in our heart that are our hope, you know, that that is the thing that is drawing us forward and, and is producing uh, the actions and the words that people hear and see in us, okay, and, and finally, it's the things that we can just taste because they're so close to our hearts, and keep the things of God and the things that pertain to the resurrection and finally your resurrection as well, because the resurrection wasn't just good news for Jesus, it was good news for us as well. Keep your heart. Keep your heart with all diligence because out of it, are the issue, that's where life comes from. And a life lived uh, reflecting and uh, the, the glory of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a life that will never be regretted. God bless you. We'll see you next time on the 10-Minute Summary.